Money FM 89.3. Thanks for joining us for this conversation where we are putting the spotlight on some of Singapore's most promising businesses. And no annual award better honours the bold ambition of Singapore's young businesses under 10 years old than the Emerging Enterprise Award, jointly organised by the Business Times, the Financial Daily under Singapore Press Holdings, as well as OCBC Bank. Now, this year, 2022, marks 15 years of the award's celebration of business innovation, resilience and excellence in SMEs, the bedrock of the Singapore economy. Since 2008, the award has been empowering startups and young enterprises with both recognition and resources to take flight and achieve stellar growth. Today, we chat one of the 15 finalists in contention for this year's award to find out what makes them tick. And we are taking a closer look at driverless vehicles, specifically the software that makes the magic happen. We have in the studio of us Dr. Dilip Limbu, co-founder and COO of Movita. Thanks for joining us, Dilip. Thank you for having me here. All right, let's start with the overview of the company first. Movita is a high-tech startup. Give us a lowdown of what it handles. Movita is a Singapore-based um, deep tech startup founded in 2016. Uh, we build autonomous software solution for urban environment, and we focus on the first and last mile kind of uh, transportation. We have uh, office in Singapore, which is headquarter, and we have office in Malaysia. We have about uh, 70 staff um, who are one of the, the best scientists and engineers uh, who have been working with us uh, since uh, our founding uh, uh, time. And we are invested by a uh, few investors to build uh, scale our products, uh, in terms of products, we have right now three products. Uh, the first one is, of course, the autonomous software solution kit. Basically, it turns any vehicle autonomous. And we have already tested on six different vehicle platforms. And uh, some of those are actually trial on different use cases uh, in different countries. The second one is driver uh, behavior monitoring system. Basically, it assists uh, drivers while they are driving uh, safer and comfortable. And we have already uh, deployed those uh, products uh, on buses as well as taxi in Singapore as well as in Malaysia. The final one is, of course, uh, autonomous bus. It's a full, fully EV electric vehicle. And um, it's a seven meter bus, which we're planning to deploy uh, in Singapore, Malaysia, and China, and even in Europe uh, as well as in the US. Yeah, with that, um, we have a right team, right products, and right business model. And we hope to capture at least thirty um, percent of market in this uh, autonomous vehicle bus. Yeah, I Thank can you. see the um, products on your website. The Moo Shuttle mm. is called a Mini P and a Mini B, and of course, you mentioned the Moo AV kit. So basically, any car vehicle on the road can be turned smart in that sense. And if you look at the Moo Box, that pretty much is a data collection type of analysis uh, system. Uh, when you use all these systems and solutions, give us an idea. What are the applications that can be made possible with these um, solutions? So I will start with Moobox. Actually, basically, Moobox, what we are doing right now is that the, the component itself actually collect data. Uh, those data are diverse behaviors, like how they drive, and also the how, I mean, how they actually follow traffic rules, like, for example, following vehicles uh, closely or you know, changing lanes without giving signals, and so and so. So uh, on top of that, it also monitors the vehicle's uh, the health. So together with three of these components, actually, they are all captured in this uh, device and pushed back to uh, cloud. So we will monitor the, the, the system's uh, or driver's behavior, which we will use in future in autonomous vehicle to train our uh, AI algorithm. So it, actually, uh, it will actually develop Driving. How to drive smarter, basically. Yes. And also maintenance of vehicles, I imagine, would be very useful and how it communicates with other uh, systems as well. Exactly. Thank and you. the part about Move AV Kit, where do you see this playing out? How will this be applied in the industries in terms of how solutions can be made possible with this Move AV Kit? Uh, in fact, it's a very good question. Um, and in fact, uh, we already licensed our technology to one of our partners in Europe. And what they are doing is uh, that they use this as a, for their own shuttle. And they are also ongoing talk with uh, other uh, uh, partners as well, where they will be actually, uh, using uh, in different applications such as uh, tractor and maybe also a commercial logistic platform. Sort of industrial yeah, applications, yes, maybe exactly. places where it might be too dangerous yeah. to drive vehicles, mm -hmm. maybe even too hot sometimes. Yeah. And also when you look at the um, applications so far mm -hmm. that have been 
adopted in Singapore and maybe elsewhere. What's been the take-up rate so far? Although in, uh, there are many hypes uh, in terms of autonomous vehicle in past, but actual uh, deployment are actually a bit what we see right now is not that um, what we were supposed to or what we actually people predict. Um, there are many reasons behind uh, why this is happening. Some of those uh, reasons are rule and regulation. Like, for example, uh, when, when we build autonomous vehicle, there are various uh, partners, uh, parties actually involved. For example, software company, hardware company, and others, right, uh, operate, operators. So uh, in terms of if even happen, right, who will be responsible for it? Uh, so it's still, still yet to actually discuss. Yeah, if there's an accident, who yeah. will be liable in the sense? Yeah. Are we closer to getting an answer yet? Um, um, I guess it's still a work in progress. Yeah, I mean, some countries are there ahead, uh, but some actually are still working on it. Yeah. When you talk about the industry, and mm. we are making, I guess, small steps towards that future adoption, mm. what are the gaps you are seeing in industry that maybe can be addressed to help adoption? It's not really technology itself. The gap, what we can see right now is, again, policy, regulation, public acceptance, and, and more on the, the standard bodies, and more on this kind of... Uh, I would say it's not technology. The other, uh, the other part of the, the ecosystem are yet to be actually there in terms of the mass adoption of autonomous vehicles. Uh, yeah. Companies and businesses willing and, I guess, keen to move forward because it involves mm. changing the legacy systems. Yep. Also, costs are involved, yep. having to change and train people. Yeah. How much of an obstacle is that going to be? Actually, you pointed out a very I mean, good point. Uh, like, um, to really uh, put autonomous vehicles on a public road, the infrastru- infrastructure itself might be different than what we have right now, and uh, which is actually still uh, under studying, you know, the, what, what kind of actually infrastructure are needed to actually develop autonomous vehicle. Maybe give us an idea. Yeah. What type of um, infrastructure are we looking at? Are we yeah. looking at dedicated lanes, you know, new traffic lights? So, yeah, I was about to share about that. Right now, for... In, in order for us to actually do the trial, it's good to have like dedicated land. But however, and in the future, right, that might not be the possible. So um, in terms of mass uh, deployment, uh, we may have to educate public, uh, other road users, and in fact, uh, must have some other kind of uh, regulation to come in to actually support in terms of deployment. Yeah. All right. Uh, in conversation, with Dr. Dilip Limbu. He is the co-founder and COO of Movita. He is one of the 15 finalists in contention for this year's Emerging Enterprise Awards. And Dr. Dilip, you've just been through the judging process. It involved, I imagine, a few judges from many different industries. What were some of the takeaways you got? Before, I mean, going to that point, right, I would like to thank uh, the organiser, actually, actually, who did a pretty good job. What questions stood up for you? Yeah, so, um, for example, um, what are the difficulties actually are there to deploy autonomous vehicle? So, uh, one one of the judges actually asked this question. So, to answer this question, as I mentioned earlier, beside the technology, there are some other stakeholders and parameters actually need to be there to actually deploy autonomous vehicle. How about your road to profitability? Is that something that came up as well? Definitely, yes. Um, that's actually some uh, one of the judges asked as well. So uh, for now, in terms of uh, in terms of revenue, um, although th- we have revenue, but there is no profitability at the moment. But um, in next two to three years time, actually, we will see some some uh, recovery of what actually our cost is. Of course, if you do win the OCBC Emerging Enterprise Awards, what does that mean for you and the company? It's an excitement for the whole company, and a team work very hard. And actually, their work are actually kind of uh, recognized and validated, right? And by uh, industry experts outside, outside of Movita. Of course, I mean, this might be one of the significant milestones for us to see us as uh, one of the emerging enterprise. And on top of that, uh, I think it will boost our uh, team uh, morale. And also, uh, it will open uh, some opportunities for us to actually go not only Singapore, beyond Singapore. Yeah. All the best for future plans. Yeah. We've been sharing Dr. Dilip Limbu. He is the co-founder and CEO of Movita. Dilip, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you very much.